everyone so it's very exciting today uh root windows 11 recently did just come out and a lot of people are trying to install it and everything right now so we want to show you a little bit of a guide on how to make um, a backup of it at least so in case uh, there was any problems during installation or if you just want to make like a recovery low usb or if you just want to install it fresh uh, this is a great way to do it as well um, we will show you how to make a usb on um, like a pretty much like a bootable installation of a, of a USB for Windows 11. We'll be showing you how to do it. Um, actually, Microsoft recently just uh, released the ISO file, which is the installation file. And they, they made that available for everyone. And uh, you could say, I did even try loading up the page right now as I'm making this video, and it was a little bit slow, which means a lot of people are probably trying to download it. So let's just go ahead and uh, take a look at it uh, on their website. I'll show you where to go, and I'll show you just the whole process of doing it. So, all right, let's get into it. All right, so what you want to do is just go to a Google site, which will be fine, and you want to type in Windows 11 ISO. And once you type it in, there will be a Microsoft.com, and I do need to repeat this. You have to only go to Microsoft.com. Don't go to any other website. This is going to be your legit installation file, your um, actual one. Don't trust any other websites. Be very careful. Go to Microsoft.com. And once you get that, then you do have, you can see it says software download Windows 11 up here. So there's a few ones when you go here, and you'll see there's a Create Installation uh, Media, and there's also a Windows 11 Installation Assistant. And there's also the Windows 11 Disk Image ISO, which is the one that we want, and we'll make it on our own. Um, there's these other ones, Installation Assistant. Uh, I really wouldn't recommend really using those. Uh, I'm not a real fan of just the Installation Assistants, especially on Windows 10, if you remember. Uh, it'll bother you with um, upgrades, and sometimes there's just problems with it if you're using it alongside of just a win regular Windows update. I usually don't recommend that. I don't know how it is for Windows 11, so I can't really say anything about it, but uh, you can want to skip that. The, the Windows Installation Media is actually pretty cool, too. Um, what it's going to do is, uh, if you looked at our other video, we did have a Windows... Um, t 10 installation media and uh, that's usually the little downloader it, it, it says it specifically um, how do you want to do it you can make a bootable from there um, there's uh, there's ways you can really do it but it's not still my favorite way of doing it. I do like to do more of a cleaner way and that's just mainly getting the the disk image ISO um, you can try this way if you want to go uh, have a little fun yourself uh, it might be a little more automatic but because we are a tech shop and we always like the cleanest way and we like to do it the way uh, we're very I'm familiar with and we know it's going to work totally fine without any extra junk that goes with it we like just doing the getting the actual iso file um, last time they didn't just include the last windows 10 did not just include the windows 10 iso on their main page they actually went through you had had to go through the installation media which is fine because they just asked you about what version you wanted if there's a 64 bit there's a 32 bit there is a the windows pro there's a lot of good ones if you're not too sure if you really want a, a true step by step you can do this as well but this will be good if you just want to get the the main file there and it's just being all an iso package and then we'll show you how to move it over to a, a, a usb and everything so let's just do it i'm, I'm sure i know this is going to take forever because i'm doing it at probably the worst possible time so I'm just going to be doing it for the ISO, so let's just do it. You can just read before you begin. I have to go too much into specs because you can always check out that on, on the actual Windows page because I just want to make this video a little, little bit more uh, straightforward, just on how to do it. There's lots of uh, system requirements that you may need that are a little bit different than uh, probably a little bit than before. They're, they're definitely bumping up a few of the specs there, and some of them might not work on, especially if you have even a, a computer that's of only a few years old. It still might throw a fit. Go look into that. I don't really want to go into it in this video. Uh, we do have our um, Windows 11 explanation. Uh, we did make another video about that. You can go check that out if you're really interested. So um, let's just go ahead and just download it. And let's see what it's going to do. Oh, man, I have to go to the sign in the volume. Line. Okay, let's not do that. So I guess we really can't do that. <laughs> I was hoping just to do that because you need to do a volume license service center. Uh, to have enterprise editions, but it looks like it's not really wanting me to do that. So and yeah i guess we're going to go back to the windows installation media which we did before because i was hoping this is going to be a little bit more straightforward so i guess we'll just do this and this is pretty much going to be I, I guess the same exact way so i guess we're just going through this so i guess ignore what everything i said about the creation uh the windows <laughs> 11 installation media because we're probably this is probably going to be the same exact thing so all right, let me go grab that little thing. It's a very small package here, and it will just go right into installation. It's very straight. I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward, I guess. It's not really a big deal. I'm actually curious. Let's just go see how it's going to go. 
So it looks very similar to the Windows 10 one or just already. It just gets a few things ready and then it's going to ask you a lot of steps. That's how the Windows 10 was. So I guess we'll hit accept and we'll see. It looks like they probably just changed a zero to a one up here. So let's just, we'll go through the steps. Uh, and so, okay. So there's one, it just says use the recommended options for this PC. I guess it says, which one do you want? Windows 11? Uh, why do I am running Windows 10 Pro on here. So I'm surprised not asking for Pro or Home. It's just saying Windows 11. So I'm a little bit curious on why it wouldn't ask. But anyways, I'm not going to ask many questions. So now it's going to say, uh, which, which media do you want to use? Do you want to use a flash drive or do you want to use an ISO? Um, I'm going to use my ISO file because I just like this step a little bit better. I'm not sure how great theirs is just to just go right into the USB flash drive. Sometimes you can just burn it from directly from this to a uh, USB, which is maybe pretty cool, I guess. But I want to make sure I go the way um, I'm really comfortable with and that I know, and I want to make sure that it works. I'm not sure on how their um, burning process will work too from, a, from right from this media to the actual uh, USB itself. All right, we'll go just go our downloads, download there. And it's going to take a little bit of time. I, I don't know how long it's going to take because again, this is the worst time to download it. It's the morning after or the day of it's supposed to be released. You can see it says 10 five here. So and it's in the morning. I don't know, maybe it'll go pretty quick, but I'll be surprised if it goes really fast. So we'll just skip a, along into that and uh, we'll go from there. We're done here and it looks like it says it's pretty much this is a very similar to the windows 10 one um it says burn the iso to a dvd and which is what we're going to do so now you're saying okay now what do i do now well you need to get uh, a usb itself or some type of uh, flash drive that you want to get and you don't care about any data off so let's uh, go right into it now so that's it right now we just put on the usb transfer files and that's it and then you plug in your computer it's just going to boot right no so what you have right now is you have a, this something called an ISO file. And what that is, is it's basically like an image file of a, of a disk. And the only way you can make it readable by USB or anything like that is you can transfer it and then it'll just be the file will just be on here. But then you need to tell the computer to boot to it. And it's not going to see that as a more of a bootable device. So what you want to do is you want to make this USB into a bootable device. I'll show you how to do that too. Okay, so now we're going to get uh, Rufus and you just Google it and you'll see it says create bootable USB drives. It's a very nice software they want to do and there's also a portable one. So this is going to make um, the ISO file that you have, it's going to make it bootable so the computer can recognize it. So what we want to do is we just want to download this. It's a nice free download. Um, there's also a portable version and there's also just one that installs. We always like portable versions here. So we always recommend always doing that because it's not going to install anything on your computer. It's going to install it um, just locally just so you can use it as more of an installation. So we'll just put in our little downloads folder there and it's going to run really fast. So I actually do have everything in my downloads folder now, which is surprising, huh? And it's very clean. Don't underestimate that. It's very clean. So now since we have Rufus now, now it's going to ask, do you want this to make changes? Yes, we do. We don't care about online updates and you're going to get this screen here. So now we take our USB and you just want to plug it in. And again, this is a USB that you don't care about any data. This is going to be a clean USB because it's going to wipe everything on here. It's going to make it only an installation disk. So let's just plug it in. So if you have anything to back up, please um, use this uh, carefully and don't use this as a, as a separate thing. Make, make sure this is only just a Windows installation, a USB. Now what we want to do, whoops. So we have all this information here. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward, just follow with my steps. So it should make it pretty simple. So, so we have our device here, just called no label. Uh, we have a brand new SanDisk USB. 
and we are just going to make it now it says where do you want to what do you want to select so we want to select a disk or iso image so this is the one we just downloaded so we want to select it and we want to pick our new download that we just had so oh look it's only like four and a half gigs it's our it's only about four gigs it's not too big so we're going to have that and now we're, we're just going to call it as a standard windows installation and there is a to-go option, and I think I might uh, just make maybe an add-on video to this, or maybe a second video about how to make a Windows 11 to-go so you can run it as a portable too. But let's just stick with this for now, and then maybe we'll do that some other time. Now we just want to call it something. Let's go Windows 11. Eh, it's Windows 11 installation, or is it Windows 11 install? I think that's fine. You want to leave it a GPT, UEFI, which is good. It does have large FAT32 as a default. I usually like doing it as NTFS, personally, and I just leave this as default. And now that should be it, because it knows where the image is going, and then you're gonna put it on this label. Double check this to make sure if you have other um, disks that you don't want to override another disk, because this will default to whatever's plugged in. And if there's only one plugged in, it'll default to that, but if there's other disks plugged in, just be careful. I'd always double check to make sure you, you check your device. So let's just hit start. And it's going to warn you all your data is going to be wiped. This is going to be a, basically a new um, bootable device. So yes. So it's going to give you this little message at the end. Once it's done, you must disable secure boot. A lot of these, because they, I know this is just usually telling you because it's a UEFI NTFS bootloader. For some of them, it's going to tell you that you need to remove secure boot. I've been doing this for a long time. And most of the time when I have a Windows installation, not a third party installation, which this is probably more talking about because that cares more about that. If you have like, a, if you're booting some other thing or you're just making some random creatable, or create bootable or anything like that then you usually need to do this most of the time when you plug it in it's just going to recognize it right away you don't have to really disable anything because it's a actual official license from windows and everything like that so secure boot cares if it's like other things outside of that but since this is an official windows iso it should be totally fine um, there might be a rare case we may have to do this but i we really don't see it too often you just usually plug it in even with secure boot should be okay so this is done and uh, that's about it for here all right so congrats you actually did make your windows 11 usb that's a bootable usb you can also use it if you just want to plug it in and install it right now and then do an upgrade you can also do that as well because this is just uh making it bootable and it has a setup everything's built in there so if you plug in you'll see that there is all those options which you can do and you can also just select it as just a regular installation like a disk or anything like that or just any usb that has software on it so you can double click it and then upgrade it i think at this point uh, because people more are doing upgrades it's not just really a fresh install as i'm making this video because it did just come out i would recommend more just going to upgrade it first and then if you want to clean install it clean install it after when you upgrade it through this image, it's going to know that you do have uh, a Windows key and everything and a license. You know that Windows 10 kind of works by touching the hardware and it does realize what type of hardware you have in that machine. But if you always want to avoid uh, pitfalls or anything like that, I would recommend upgrading first. And then, then it's going to know that you do have a registered Windows 11. And then you would just go back to the bootable and then maybe clean install it that way just to avoid any problems. We always do recommend doing clean installs uh, if you can. Uh, make sure you back up any type of data, but uh, clean install the operating system. Make sure you wipe that drive and put on a brand new version of Windows so you don't have potential issues. Sometimes, uh, especially there's old installation files or anything like that. You, you can wipe those, but sometimes there's always problems. If you always want the best experience, always have a clean installation, and now you do have one handy. So, so one last thing. Um, if you're going to be booting to this, you might want to ask, well, how are you going to boot to it? So. Um, your computer has a lot of uh, boot options if you have a custom built or if you have HP or Dell pre-built. Uh, they really do have options for this. When you start your computer for the first time, you'll see the logo of it. And then sometimes you might see the bottom that it says uh, there's like a bootable boot options or something like that. Some of them could be F12. Some of them could be escape or some of them could be F9. It's always hard to tell. So you would want to definitely check to, to make sure how to boot it. You want to check to make sure of your uh, the manufacturer of your at least your motherboard or computer and to see how you do access the bootable options there. 
Um, and again, most of the time for for these Windows installations, they're not gonna you're not gonna need to disable any secure boot or anything because this is an actual Windows um, official ISO file. So I don't really think there should be any issues really just installing once you plug it in, it should recognize it. If you don't have any operating system on your hard drive and you're plugging in for the first time, you can just plug it in and it should boot right to it right away. There shouldn't be any problems. But if you have data or anything, make sure you do back that up, especially if you're going to do a clean install of this. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more stuff like this, we also do lots of data recoveries. And um, I know it's a little bit off topic what we do, but we do lots of data recoveries and... Uh, and liquid spills on board repairs. We like doing more fixes like that, but of course, since this is such big news, we always want to keep people informed as well. So hope, hope you guys enjoyed watching, learned something today, and uh, and just use your new bootable USB. And I hope it really did help you guys out. So anyways, uh, enjoy Windows 11, and I hope it's going to be a great one this time because uh, you know how they go sometimes, so we'll see. All right, anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.